Boom shakalaka, what is going on everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love. Today's episode, happy birthday, Silk Road. Belated birthday. The birthday was yesterday. But I just found out today, thanks to this awesome tweet sent to me by Craig Simpson. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about all about Silk Road, everything about it. And I actually had a really good idea as to how to help Ross possibly get out of prison. So if you want to find out all that stuff, stay tuned. All right, guys, what is up? Randall here today. Yesterday was the was the birthday of the founding of Silk Road, and I missed it. So today I wanted to do an episode because I think this is one of the biggest miscarriages of justice, as Noam Chomsky said. But it is. And I found out about this thanks to Craig Simpson. He sent me this, and uh, basically this is a Bitcoin babe, and she's naked, and, you know, naked, happy birthday, Silk Road. So obviously I had to um, make it all blurry for YouTube. But let's talk about Silk Road. I talk about this a lot because this is a huge, huge, really crazy case that is just an absolute mess. All right. We'll go through it. This is Ross Ulbricht. Okay. He created Silk Road when he was 26. And Silk Road was basically eBay where you could pay with Bitcoin. And because of that, and because people thought that Bitcoin was anonymous back in the day, they sold all types of stuff. However, the most commonly sold thing was marijuana, which is now legal for medical sale in 33 states in America, okay? A majority of states in America, you can now buy this thing that he has two life sentences plus 40 years in prison for over the counter. So, or with a, with a medical store. So, let's go through what happened. Uh, basically, he's been in prison already for 2,311 days, seven years already. Ross Ulbricht is condemned to die in prison for creating an e-commerce site called Silk Road, an entrepreneur passionate about free markets and privacy. He was 26 when he made the site. He's, he was never prosecuted for causing harm or bodily injury, and no victim was named at the trial. That's right. A lot of people think he's in prison for this uh, trumped-up murder-for-hire charge, but he's not. That was never named in the court case. Okay, All of his crimes that, he's, that he has, two life sentences plus 40 years, are non-violent crimes. Now, if we take a look at a murderer, somebody who actually kills somebody else, guess what? They get a life sentence. But not even. In, in many states, if we scroll down here, in many states, you know, some get 15, 20, 25 years, and they can be subject for parole and decreased sentences. But with this charge that he's got, two life sentences plus 40 years without parole, that's basically saying he is condemned to die in prison. Now, basically, the users of Silk Road chose to exchange a variety of goods, both legal and illegal, including drugs, most commonly small amounts of cannabis. Prohibited was anything involuntary that could harm a third party. That was prohibited. Anything that could harm somebody, like murder, prohibited. So, again, miscarriage of justice. So, Ross was not convicted of selling drugs or illegal items himself, but was held responsible for what others sold on the site, which is ludicrous. I mean, look at all these corporations who are never hold held accountable for anything that goes on, him because he created the first use case for Bitcoin. Really, I believe that without Silk Road, Bitcoin would not be here. Cryptocurrencies would not be here. Bitcoin would be something like Bitgold. Nobody would talk about it anymore. Cryptocurrencies wouldn't be here because nobody would have seen this use case for cryptocurrencies. So this is very truly the first use case for cryptos. And because of it, He's, sent, he's serving his entire life in jail, which is actually going to cost America about $2 million to keep him in prison, wrongly in prison. Again, my opinion, absolutely crazy. Now, if we take a look at some of these other people who were charged here, uh, and it's going to be right above my head. We'll, we'll maybe zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Nope, can't zoom in. Okay, well, anyways. So, the, the longest charge, John Slump, the biggest drug dealer on Silk Road, got 10 years. Some people, the, the guy after Ross was in prison, the guy who created Silk Road 2 was released with no sentence. Okay, so they got between no charges and 10 years, and yet Ross got double life sentences plus 40 years without parole. Crazy. Smeared with false allegations. So these were uh, false allegations, unprosecuted allegations of planning violence that much of the media amplified through inaccurate and sensationalized reporting. The allegations were never tri never charged at trial, never proven, never submitted to, or ruled on by a jury, and eventually dismissed with prejudice. So, 
Ross consistently denied the allegations. Uh, and even alleged victim Curtis Green is a fervent supporter of Ross's clemency. He says here, so even the person they said Ross was trying to murder, he says Ross got a raw deal. There's so much more to the Silk Road story than people know about, and I can't yet talk about. I don't believe Ross is dangerous or that he's, it's in his character to order a hit on anyone. He should never have gotten that horrible sentence. Look at that. That's the person they're saying he had this murder for hire thing, and he says free Ross. So. There's even more. So basically, this whole case is riddled with corruption and violations. So including Fourth Amendment digital privacy violations. Two corrupt federal investigators now in prison. Now these federal investigators, not only did they steal a bunch of Bitcoin from Silk Road, but also they had access, root access, to the Silk Road site for a year before Ross was arrested, during which time those murder-for-hire charges were apparently drummed up. Corruption, favorable evidence and hit and more hidden from the jury. Proof of multiple DPR administrators hidden from the jury. Proof of evidence tampering found after trial. Mishandling of critical evidence. Defense cross-examination repeatedly, repeatedly blocked. Defense witnesses prevented from testifying. Parallel construction and other lies used to convict Ross. Evidence of NSA involvement. So all this stuff is a really messed up case. And really, if you haven't done this yet, I signed this a long time ago. And now there's over 265,000 people who have signed this. This is a petition on change.org for the clemency of Ross Ulbricht serving double life sentence for a website, which is absolutely ludicrous. So if you haven't signed that, go ahead and sign that. I will post a link to it down in the comments. It'll be a pinned comment up above. But this got me thinking because I was like, how can we get him out of prison? Because this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, all this stuff. Keanu Reeves says that. It's ridiculous as well. Noam Chomsky says a huge miscarriage of justice. And all of these people, there's over 160 eminent organizations and figures who have voiced their support for Ross Ulbricht. So I was thinking, how, what can we do to really bring more attention to this to get Ross out of prison? And also, in doing so, it'll bring more attention to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and will help the price of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies go up. But that's not the main thing here because this is... This guy, this young guy, is spending his whole entire life in prison for building a website. Guys, how many of you have built websites? You want to go to prison for that? I mean, why don't we send the creator of eBay to prison, creator of Twitter to prison, creator of Facebook to prison, creator of YouTube to prison? Why don't we just send them all to prison for stuff that people post on there? That's ridiculous. So, I had this idea, okay? Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I have listened to a few true crime stories on uh, podcasts. And they're pretty popular. Now, one of the ones that I listened to pretty recently was To Live and Die in L.A. Pretty intriguing story. Very well done by Neil Strauss, the author of The Game and uh, some other books. But, anyways, I had this idea. What if we could find somebody to do a true crime story of Ross Ulbricht and Silk Road? Because if this was... I mean, this is a ridiculous case here. This is a ridiculous story. Anybody who listens to this, who actually sees the evidence and looks at it would say, this is absolutely ridiculous. What happened? Well, guess what? More and more people listen to podcasts all the time. People are in their car. We could get somebody who can create a true crime story to do the story of Ross Ulbricht and Silk Road. Because that would, one, bring more widespread attention to this, potentially get over a million people to sign the petition, potentially get more widespread attention, people knowing about it, and potentially get Ross out of prison for a sentence that he really doesn't deserve. So I was thinking, how do we do that? How do we contact Neil Strauss? Well, you can actually go to neilstrauss.com slash contact and contact him. I did this earlier today. I wrote him today. I said, hey, this would be a great idea for another true crime story that you have. But there's not only him. There's other people who do true crime stories on podcasts as well. Somebody, if they were to cover this on a podcast, could potentially bring a lot more attention to this because that's what needs to happen. The reason why nothing's being done is because people are talking about it, but not enough people are talking about it. When this is like number one podcast on uh, iTunes Store, Google Play Store, wherever, when this is the number one podcast on there, everybody's talking about it, everybody says, this is fucked up, we need to do something about this, then the president will see, or somebody will see, hey, this guy's wrongly imprisoned, let's do something to get him out. So that's my idea for things. If you guys agree with me, definitely share this episode. Uh, recommend contacting Neil Strauss, letting him know this would be great. Also contact 
some other podcasters, let them know that this would be great. Do what you can to help out. If you know people who could help Ross, who could potentially be good lawyers, get him out of prison, help him. Sign the petition if you haven't done that stuff. Because guess what? It is Happy Birthday Silk Road. The first Bitcoin use case. Bitcoin probably wouldn't be here without Silk Road. And guess what? It's the belated birthday by a day. But happy birthday, Silk Road. Thanks for sending me that, Craig. Uh, great episode idea. And thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, check out the Monarch Wallet. Hold Bitcoin and 3,000 other cryptocurrencies earn and earn up to 10% interest while holding them on there securely. So catch you guys later. Have a good one. Peace.